Hey guys, David here and welcome to Digital Outlook. Guys, we have another amazing show for you today. XRP Ledger explodes with address activity. So guys, let's get to it. So guys, one of the things that you want to have top of mind in this space is, of course, an off-ramp. A lot of us know how to get into the space, but few have really actually thought through how they're going to get off. And guys, let me tell you something. In that last bull run, when this market literally was going wild, most of these exchanges, the servers went down because they could not handle the volume. And if you think the market stopped trading, Trading while they went and fixed the servers to get them back up hours on end? No, guys, it didn't. And that is when Judy and I had decided, hey, we're going with a digital asset broker. And guys, the broker that we chose was Caleb and Brown. And guys, this is Caleb and Brown right here. Now, Caleb and Brown are like any traditional broker. The only difference is you don't pay one fee to open up an account with Caleb and Brown. In fact, you can speak with your assigned broker as many times as you like, and it doesn't cost you one penny. And on top of that, should you choose to use their, their institutional grade custody platform, they don't even charge you a fee for that. Guys, the only fee that you pay with Caleb and Brown is when you buy and when you sell. And I'll tell you what, during that last bull run, it was a great comfort just to be able to pick up the phone and talk with our broker when we really needed to. Now, guys, we have a link right down in the description of every one of these videos where you can sign up with Caleb and Brown. And full disclosure, if you use that link, they pay us a referral fee. But guys, whether you choose to use that link or not, you owe it to yourself to look into Caleb and Brown as a viable off-ramp when you're really, really going to need one. So guys, here I am. I'm on Fruition's website looking at the XRP Unleash Premiere. And guys, I'll tell you what, have they ever been selling like crazy? They've sold out in Los Angeles. They've sold out in Houston, the one that Judy and I are going to. And they've sold out in Scottsdale, Arizona. And guys, these things are going, like I say, like crazy. And the thing is this. I've been to a number of these various conferences like XRP Vegas, Quantum Summit, and things like that. And guys, when you consider that for literally like $39.99, you can buy a ticket to actually go to one of these premieres. And at the premiere, you're going to meet up with a bunch of various influencers, people that are in the film, the producers of the film. It's not just watching the documentary. I mean, there's question and answer and all kinds of stuff going on. And guys, Guys, it is truly going to be spectacular when this thing literally gets released and totally unleashed. Guys, be a part of the history of this space. This is telling our story. Get out there and get one of these seats that are left. And I'll tell you what, I can't wait to see you there. So guys, it seems that lately interest in this space is absolutely exploding. And one of the ways that you can actually measure that is the addresses for new accounts with XRP Ledger. And guys, they are blowing up like crazy. Now just check this article out right over here. XRP Ledger sees explosion in address activity amid high-risk crypto loans hitting a two-year high. Just listen to this. As the need for energy-efficient, low-cost, and fast payments increases, XRP Ledger is witnessing growing demand. Calling out this development, leading on-chain metrics provider Santiment acknowledged XRP Ledger has spiked in active wallets significantly, reaching 35,799 unique wallets, making at least one transfer in a single day, the highest in over three months. Additionally, 3,858 new wallets were created in a single day, the highest amount 
in over seven months. Guys, no matter what these fudsters want us to believe, hey, there is more interest than you can fathom in XRP. It is really something else. Now listen to this. Top analytics firm CryptoQuant echoed these sentiments and stated, XRP Ledger saw significant growth in automated market maker liquidity with strong increases in automated market maker deposits and automated market maker create despite a drop in automated market maker bid the rise in liquidity in liquidity deposits indicates confidence in the existing pools and guys automated market makers have brought huge amounts of liquidity into the xrp ledger ecosystem and as an open source now listen to this decentralized blockchain network xrp ledger is gaining steam thanks to its extremely fast transaction speed which far outweighs that of leading networks such as ethereum and bitcoin and on top of that guys you are talking about next to nothing in terms of fees less than pennies and this is a major deal in this space because people are looking for fast settlement on top of it they're looking for major volume with the most minimum fees now therefore xrp ledger is a force to reckon with in cross-border remittances and transactions earlier this year ripple pumped a whopping 10 million into tokenized u.s treasury bills on the xrp ledger this move was deemed strategic since it could boost the ecosystem's native coin on XRP. But guys, think about this coincidence. Isn't it so interesting that we're right ready to see the release of RLUSD on the XRP ledger, which is backed by, guess what, U.S. Treasury bills. And yet we're in there now seeing tokenization of United States Treasury bills on the XRP ledger. Come on, guys. It's not all coincidence in my mind. Now, as address activity in the XRP network rises, high-risk crypto loans have also been rising. According to the Into the Block data, high-risk loans have spiked after hitting the 5 million mark, a scenario last seen in June of 2022. Now, therefore, this shows intensified borrowing in the crypto sector, which could signal the high demand for leverage since traders are in high gear to amplify their expected returns. Now, guys, I'll tell you what, Judy and I personally do not do any kind of leverage trading. I have been there to see how these things can change on a dime, both in shorts and in longs. And folks that have taken a long time to build up a significant position in one leverage trade could be absolutely absolutely liquidated guys you really need to be on the ball in order to be able to be doing this now for that matter judy and i aren't even traders but i'm just gonna let you know hey there is risk involved here because what you're doing is you're really buying it on margin you're talking about that borrowing there and guys there's a lot of risk in this space as is, but you go out there, you determine your own risk. For me, I don't like to be a degen and throw all kinds of leverage in there. Now, this indicates that investors are anticipating an increase in crypto prices because the loans will be repaid after this happens. That is their expectation. Additionally, the high-risk crypto loans illustrate a surge in speculative market sentiment. Now, guys, in this space, there's three kinds of analysis right there's sentiment analysis technical analysis and of course fundamental analysis guys sentiment is one of the biggest drivers in this digital asset space of course the fundamentals for xrp bar none as far as i'm concerned they absolutely blow the competition away and of course you got technical analysis that plays a role and these guys are saying hey look People are willing to really risk it so much so they're willing to leverage and borrow against what they believe is going to happen so they can pay that loan back with their gains. And these are folks that have had a risk appetite like absolute Godzilla as far as I'm concerned. But it definitely shows the sentiment is moving positive in this space. Otherwise, they wouldn't be taking these big bites of risk in my opinion. Now, guys, something else that's really big news in this space right now is right 
right over here. Now, Ripple has filed its Form C and it's made a big time appeal. And this is how a breakdown of it is. Now, Ripple Labs has taken a bold step in its ongoing legal battle with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission by filing Form C in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. The blockchain company is not just contesting a previous court ruling, but is setting the stage for a potential landmark decision in cryptocurrency regulation. Guys, they have thought if we're going to fight this out, we're taking it all the way to the wall. Now listen to this. This strategic strategic move came after a district court imposed a hefty fine on the company. Well, the SEC was asking for $2 billion. The fine that was laid down was $125 million. So in my estimation, actually, that was not bad, uh, you know, considering everything like that. But labeling its institutional sales of XRP as unregistered securities transaction. But what exactly is Form C and why is Ripple so determined to challenge this ruling? Form C is a civil appeal pre-argument statement outlining the specific grounds for a party's appeal to a court's decision. For Ripple, filing this form signifies their formal request for the appellate court to re-examine the district court's legal interpretations from scratch, a process known as a de novo review. Now, Ripple's chief legal officer, and this is important, pay attention, this is big, Stuart Alderati confirmed the filing on X on October 25th today, emphasizing that the SEC, now get this, can't submit new evidence or ask Ripple to produce more. This means the appeals court will review the existing record without introducing new information, potentially expediting the legal process. Guys, a lot of folks believe that when you're out there appealing this, you get to retry the whole case. That is not how it goes down. And Stuart Alderati is explaining it right here. They cannot bring brand new evidence. And of course, they can't demand Ripple to produce it. And this is where I think the SEC is going to lose big time in this appeal because Judge Annalisa Torres adjudicated that case according to the tenets and the and the prongs of the Howey test, which is exactly what the SEC asked her to do. But what happened is when they couldn't meet all the prongs of the Howey test and Judge Annalisa Torres came back and said, listen, these sales in the secondary market, they do not represent securities. Well, they went after, of course, the institutional side of it. And she said, look, there is indication from back there in 2013 that some of these institutional sales could, based on those arguments, form securities. So that's where there was no disgorgement. Why? Because nobody lost anything, guys. These institutional investors way back there in 2013 have made out like bandits in comparison. And so as a result, in terms of their gains, there's no discouragement. And that's where a lot of this, you know, two billion was coming from. But the SEC is coming back and they're saying, well, no, we, you know, because they dropped going after Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. Well, now they've thrown that back on the table. And what Ripple's aiming to do here is to overturn the whole thing and say, listen, not even the institutional sales were should be designated as securities now beyond the immediate legal battle the company's filing has significant implications for the cryptocurrency industry a successful appeal could set a precedent for how digital assets are classified and regulated they might even the sec could very well lose jurisdiction over the whole thing affecting Ripple and other crypto entities facing similar legal challenges. Stuart Alderati expressed optimism about the appeal, stating that the SEC's distraction and confusion strategy for Ripple and the industry is just background noise now. This confidence signals the company's readiness to defend its operations and advocate for clear regulatory frameworks in the crypto space. Moreover, the appeal focuses on specific legal questions rather than a sweeping examination of the regulatory classification of cryptocurrencies. This targeted approach may streamline the legal proceedings and bring quicker resolution to the case. And one thing, guys, that is not being challenged by the SEC is XRP's status in and of itself as not being a security. And that is massive. You're not going to see it being delisted 
from all these exchanges or drop from all these trusts like Graysales Trust. You're seeing applications for exchange traded funds from Canary, from Bitwise, from Grayscale, and on and on, guys. It is going to be something way different than what it was when they first dropped the lawsuit. And I don't think this appeal is really going to make a hoot of difference when it comes to where XRP really goes in this next bull cycle. Because guys, this is really a, a, a boxing match just between the SEC and Ripple over this fine, whether it's going to be higher than 125 or, you know, closer to that 2 billion or whatever it is. And that's the deal, guys. This is all about the money. It is not about the designation nor the classification of XRP as a security because everyone has accepted that the law of the land at this point is XRP is not a security and that is not changing. Big, big deal. Well, guys, something else right here. Ripple mints another 50. 50,000 RLUSD stablecoin and the supply is now at that 48 million. Ripple has minted another 50,000 RLUSD increasing its stablecoin supply. The minting was confirmed on the Ethereum blockchain by a community-based tracker and rec recorded it at block height well, I'm just going to say 21041720. This process involved the transfer of tokens to a designated wallet. The issuance is part of Ripple's strategy in the ongoing testing phase before unveiling RLUSD for public use. By offering RLUSD, Ripple aims to support enterprises and, by the way, financial institutions in executing secure, large-scale, cross border payments. Now, this is a big, big deal. In fact, RLUSD is going to provide liquidity to this XRP ecosystem like we have not seen. And guys, there are folks saying, well, Ripple's out there replacing XRP with RLUSD. And that is absolutely phony, baloney, and not the truth. In fact, David Swartz, Brad Garlinghouse, all of them have come out to say, hey, if you think that we have dropped the ball when it comes to XRP because of RLUSD, then you are missing the plot. Now, the latest minting is significantly smaller than the previous ones. On October 16th, Ripple minted 4 million RLUSD in one transaction. The day before, Ripple had minted a massive 9 million RLUSD tokens in another single transaction. And even more staggering, 18 million tokens were minted earlier on October 15th, bringing the total minted on that day to 27 million RLUSD tokens. With the latest record, the total circulating supply of RLUSD is 48.6 million tokens, according to Etherscan. It's worth noting that the minting activities of RLUSD are often followed by a series of transfers to unknown wallets. These transactions typically involve thousands thousands of RLUSD, including a recent transfer of 100,000 RLUSD on October 19th. This series of minting events reflects Ripple's commitment to thoroughly testing the RLUSD ahead of its fall public launch. Ripple began testing RLUSD on both the XRP Ledger and Ethereum Mainnet in early August, and the stablecoin remains in private beta on both blockchains. Guys, because they're waiting, once they get that regulatory approval, bang, is this going to take a bite out of the stablecoin market. Now, in a recent interview with Thinking Crypto Podcast, CEO, Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse addressed the significance of RLUSD within Ripple's vision for payments. He pointed out that stable coins have been a fundamental component of Ripple's payment operations, mentioning that their institutional activities once represented 20% of the total of USDC minted. Garlinghouse referred to the banking crisis and the de-pegging of USDC as key indicators of market potential, particularly in light of Ripple's strong financial position and liquidity. He clarified that Ripple's goal is not to compete directly with established stablecoins like Tether, but to foster overall market growth. And in fact, they have done studies where they believe the stablecoins market in just literally a few years from now, $16 trillion. 
Guys, right now, do you know the whole of this digital asset space, Bitcoin and all the rest is only what? 2.5 trillion, 16 trillion. Wow. Are you kidding me? Now, he also suggests that the while Tether may continue to expand, its market share could eventually decrease, allowing for increased liquidity, get this, on the XRP ledger, which would ultimately benefit the broader XRP ecosystem. Bang, right there. Guys, we are seeing some major, major interest and movement happening in this space. And I genuinely believe that what's coming next is going to blow people's minds. I know know that it seems like when you've been holding on this long oh my goodness is it ever going to happen guys i was there i watched it just tinker along like that and all of a sudden bang 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 did it ever blow right through the atmosphere it's happened before guys i genuinely believe it's going to happen again and that's why i'm out there guys encouraging you go out there really research it for yourself figure out you know what it is and what it's going to do what the future holds and what you believe and guys i'll tell you what i cannot wait to be standing there in that winter circle with you right beside me when we cross that finish line so guys, like I have oftentimes said, one of the best decisions that Judy and I made in that last bull run is that we got our plan in place before it literally took off. And what our coaching program offers, that is where you and I can meet personally one-on-one -on -one for one hour over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you our personal journey in that last bull run and what enabled Judy and I to experience some amazing financial success. I share with you the mistakes we made so that you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls we did. We take a look at your portfolio and make sure that it's balanced towards your goals and we work together to develop your exit strategy. We can even get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet along with delivering to you some amazing techniques that are really going to help you in this space. Now, the cost of that is $250, and if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com, and we'll get y'all booked in. So guys, I truly hope that you enjoyed today's video. And as always, it's not financial advice. It's just my two cents. Hit the like and subscribe and drop your comments right down there in the comment section. And I'll catch you in the next one.